Okay, today we're going to make a lamp using Corian. I'm setting up my file now. I'm using VCarve Pro. I'm going to cut out the texture of the surface of the lamp on my CNC machine. Each one of these rectangles are going to overlap one another and basically make a checkerboard pattern inside of that 7 by 7 inch square. We're going to make a big cube so we're going to need six sides. And so that's why I'm making six panels here. Uh, my table is 18 by 24, so that's the space I have to cut within. I'm using a V-bit, a big V-bit, and you see there I'm just running the uh, virtual file just to see what it looks like, and I'm happy with the way it looks. And so now I'm digging up what I know I have here is a piece of half-inch thick Corian in the color Glacier Ice. It's a translucent color. I'll be able to shine light through it. And there it is. That's a leftover piece of about a $400 piece of 8 foot by 30 inch glacier ice, half inch thick Corian. And uh, just to cut down a small piece there, I'm using my jigsaw. I'm surfacing the top of my table. I use a sacrificial piece of MDF. I hot glue it in place. And then I flatten it out with a one and a half inch bit there. Now I'm putting in my one and one quarter inch V bit. It's important to flatten out your tabletop so that you get perfect pyramids. In, the, in this instance, I'm cutting out what look like pyramids or waffles on each tiled side. That's my vacuum. And I hot glue it down, if you notice. It's a quick and easy way, and it avoids... I always accidentally cut screw heads. And so here I'm just running the file. I was a little daring. Usually I would just run one of these squares, and I just ran the whole thing just to see what would happen. And uh, thankfully it worked out good. And I just have a couple of interesting shots. I have the GoPro moving around while I'm working. Each one of those sides is just made up of a bunch of those long rectangles that overlap one another and the pyramids are created with the V-bit. And here I am, I'm cutting my fifth side. And it's going well. You run the risk of blowing a fuse or something shutting down when you get this far into a cut. But thankfully everything went well. My cut was three tenths of an inch deep into the half inch thick Corian. At the bottom of the pyramid that leaves two tenths of an inch for the light to shine through. Now I'm looking at my cut, it looks pretty good. And I'm going to change the bit now to a one eighth of an inch bit. And I'm going to cut around each square. I have it set up to cut about four times, four passes, and it's set to a climb cut. When you set it to a climb cut, it tends to leave the debris on your waste board and not necessarily on your finished piece. And there I pull out the waste board and all the debris sort of stayed in between both of them and it vacuums right up. If it wasn't set to climb cut, it would have a tendency to stick to the pieces that we're saving. And there they are. Each piece is hot glued down because I had a feeling of where they might land and I just squirted hot glue on the back of each one in that earlier shot where I glued it down. And now I'm breaking the hot glue off using compressed air or canned air. When you turn it over that Freon comes out and it freezes the glue and the glue cracks right off. And uh, especially with Corian, I know it's not going to be a problem. It'll pop right off of that. If it was wood, it would leave a little bit of debris in the wood. If it was the back, it would be okay. And now I'm chamfering each one of my tiles. Because I'm going to glue them together. So I chamfer them exactly the same. They're all exactly the same shape. And if everything goes well, it should all fit together. Just chamfering each side. And uh, when I talk about a climb cut, that's a climb cut when I go in the direction that the bit is spinning. And now I'm just using Cineacrylate or Crazy Glue to glue the sides together. And I'm using that steel brick to keep everything square. And I'm using a little activator. Whatever that brand of that activator is, you can see it there. It's bad brand. It doesn't work very well. Now I'm gluing on the other side there. A little bit of activator, a little bit of glue. I'm 
tacking it and then I put a, a better joint once I know it's tacked. The CA glue can be very messy if you lose control of it so that's why I use it in small doses. Small little dots. Now I'm gluing on what will become the bottom of the cube. And I'm letting these glue dots dry. Of course I'm speeding it up for the video. And now that last sixth side is going to be the top. And I'm just dry fitting it to make sure it fits well. And I'm drilling a hole because this is where our lamp cord is going to come through. What I'm going to light this lamp with is a seven foot strip of LED. It's RGB, so it makes all different colors. It has a remote control. You can change it to strobe, you can change the actual color, you can change it to flash. I'm wrapping it around an acrylic tube there to make it into a snowball to fit suspended inside of the cube. I'm going to hang it off that wire. And I couldn't get the camera to not strobe in some of the settings. And there I'm just gluing the top on. If I ever needed to get back in there I could just pop those joints. With this Corian I know that I could glue it and then pop it back open later. And there it is. It's basically done. I'm just going to experiment a little bit with the color. This whole project was all about exploring the textures that I can carve into Corian. Corian carves really beautifully. It leaves a smooth texture. It didn't need to be sanded once it was carved. It's of course using a good bit and the proper speeds and feeds to get a really nice cut. I'm really happy with the way this lamp came out. This is a pretty good learning experience for me. I've never made these pyramids before. It's something I've been wanting to do for a while now. And now I'm that much smarter. Thank you for watching.